Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and I've been using the Unity uh, 3 Preview that was mailed out yesterday and I've been playing around with the train so I just want to quickly go over to show people how to or at least what's different with the train creation in Unity 3 so this menu here for your train menu exact same as it was before so we'll just create a train and if you go in you set the resolution this is all the same I'm just going to leave it at its defaults if we go over to the inspector this here is not going to be alien to anyone uh, same as with the height one we'll just create a little mound here there we go uh, all of them are the same. Oh, if they edit textures, it's a tad different. The first texture you add now will be uh, semi transparent. This is new as well. Uh, Unity already did a tutorial on the the new texture. Well, I think I believe you could call it asset management. So let's just add that. Uh, you can't really see it still, so let's add another texture. Uh, let's go with whatever the next one is. Good dirt. We'll add that. So you notice this first texture that we add is semi transparent. It's about the only difference in that tab. Trees. You add trees the exact same way that you did in previous Unity. So the uh, Unity comes with the palms, so we'll just add that. So let's go add a bunch of palm trees down here. There we go. Uh, detailed meshes and grass, exact same as they were before. This last tab, uh, it's the exact same except you'll notice it's missing two parts. One was the Kelk light map, and the other was the little drop down to pick how your train was going to be lit, if it was going to be pixel lit, or text lit, or using a light map. Instead, now uh, you can just use the light mapper. Uh, first, let's add a directional light. So it's angled a bit so it's a little more interesting. Then let's move it out of the way so it's not bugging me. Alright, so next let's get rid of the main camera. We'll add a third person controller, or I guess a first person controller. And now when you're dragging things along in your scene, you can actually place them exactly where you want them. So I'm going to place this here and move it up just a little bit and I want to rotate them so it's looking at my mountain. I want to move them back a bit, maybe down a bit. So if we hit play, here we are. We got our trees. I didn't put any bend in there. You can actually control the direction they bend now with, uh, what do they call it, a wind control or something wind zone. And we'll get into that in the second part of this tutorial. Alright, so we've got all that set up. Let's go to the directional light. And you'll notice here you can have your type of light, the three basic ones you're used to. The color, I'm going to make it just a little bit yellow. Uh, the intensity, you know, how intense you want your light to be. That's uh, cookie cookie size. Shadow, we want shadows. Uh, I'm just going to do hard shadows for now. I'm going to make them high resolution. I'm not really sure what the difference is between uniform focus and uniform. I know that existed in Unity 2.61. I just never really looked into it. I'm not going to draw a halo or a flare. Render mode, this is new to me. Uh, important or not important. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but I've noticed that when I've had 3D models in the scene and a terrain, if I select important, it makes my 3D models very... Uh, white very the, the lighting on it's very saturated if I pick not important it seems to ignore it a bit more so they come out better I uh, light mapping you can pick if you want your if you want it to be real time bake only or auto I'm just going to leave it to auto for now now to get into your beast light mapping it's under tools light mapping the first time you open it you'll get this window just floating around that's not exactly floating I'll get it floating around. I just don't like floating windows. So I've docked mine over here. Okay, there's three different 
uh, tabs up here. If you have nothing selected on the object tab, it'll just tell you to select a light, a mesh renderer, or a train from the scene. Uh, the bake option, this is the one I'm going to be using for this scene. Uh, let's actually just start it up. Uh, there's a lot of settings here, but let's just bake right now. Let me sure, make sure everything's set up. I do have shadows on, right? Let's go to the inspector. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to hit bake. It's going to ask me to, for the name of my scene, so I'm just going to call it Demo 1. Now, it creates my scene and it crashed. Well, there's something for Unity. You can see exactly how it happened. <laughs> uh, we'll submit. I can just send him the video. So let's reopen it, see how that goes. Now it did save, so hopefully I won't have to redo all that. If I do, then I don't know, maybe I should have left that submit thing open. Ah, there we go. There's our demo scene. So let's go into the first person control and zoom in on it. Let's go to our directional light, make sure that it's still set to do shadows. Yep, I'm going to do hard shadows. Let's go back to the light map editor. Look at the bake. All right, we'll hit bake. There, there we go. It started. You can see down here it gives you a progress bar and tells you exactly what it's doing. But let's go back up to up to here. Now, when you created your scene and it asked you for its name, it's going to create a folder underneath after that's going to be the exact same name as your scene. And that is where it's going to store all of your light maps for that scene. So if you have multiple scenes, you're going to end up with multiple folders with the same name as your scene. And all the light maps for that scene are going to be in those folders. It seems like it's going to create a lot of different folders. Now, I usually put my scenes in a scene folder. I don't, I don't know. I'll have to wait, see, wait until I create something that has a ton of scenes to see how messy it gets. All right. So let's go over some of these options. Uh, you can change uh, the light that gets bounced around in your atmosphere. You see, you change the intensity, the bounce, you can actually bounce light off of other objects. Uh, the boost you get from it, these are all labeled pretty pretty good. You should be able to figure out what each one does just by having over them. Well, one thing you might want to look at is down here you, when you're doing your light map, you'll see this little display. And if I had light maps generated already, you could toggle them on and off. You can set the shadow distance, and you can also look at your sh uh, the resolution for your light map. And that will bring up this little checkerboard display. And what that is, uh, where is it? Right here. That's showing your Texels per world unit. For those who don't know, a Texel is basically, think of it, uh, it's like pix pictures have pixels, textures have texels. Uh, I believe it stands for texture elements, so texture pixels. I uh, just looked up on Wikipedia, they'll probably tell you exactly what it means. But anyway, it's how many texels are going to be in each world unit. <clears throat> so it's almost done. There we go, it's done. So if you notice right away, our trees have shadows. Now you can't really tell here, but the trunks don't have shadows. And I didn't add colliders to the actual trees so you can run right through them. But that's something that was in the uh, 2.61. You just add a capsule collider to it and use that as a prefab and you're good to go. So it's a little dark. You can play around with the options to fix all that. Let's go up to the directional light, go to the inspector, turn it off. There we go. Everything's using the light now that we just created. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new scene. I've actually gone ahead and done it already. So let's open that up. 